all digital electronic devices such as phones, computers, calculators operate based on two states that are off or logic 0 and on or logic 1. These devices utilize memory to store information in the form of binary bits represented as 1s and zeros. A bistable multivibrator is a circuit that can store one bit of memory. The name bistable means that the output can exist in either stable 0 or stable 1 form. This transition from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 can be made by externally triggering the circuit. In this video, we will learn how a transistor-based bistable multivibrator circuit works. Let's get started. This is the circuit diagram of bistable multivibrator. The circuit consists of four resistors and two transistors. Let's understand the purpose of the transistor. It is used as a switch in the multivibrator. Basically, when a voltage of around 0.7 volt is applied between base and emitter of the transistor, it acts as a closed switch between collector and emitter. Now if a load is connected like this, the current through it can be controlled by using base voltage. Instead of using an additional voltage source for the base to emitter voltage, you can use the same voltage source that powers the load. But the base to emitter junction is just like a PN junction diode. So base to emitter voltage must not be more than 0.7 volts. For that reason, to turn the transistor on using voltage such as 9 volts, a resistor must be connected in series to limit current. This way, the transistor turns on and the voltage between base and emitter remains around 0.7 volts. Now, can you tell what will happen if base and emitter of the transistor is shorted using a conductor? If you have answered that the transistor turns off, then you are absolutely correct. It turns off because voltage between base and emitter becomes 0 volts as it is shorted. And all the current flows through the conductor because it is the least resistance part. However, when the conductor is removed, current easily flows through the base and the transistor turns on again. If a push button is connected between base and emitter, pressing the button will turn the transistor off and releasing the button will turn it back on. Now tell me what will be the voltage between collector and emitter when the transistor is at closed position or at open position. At closed position, collector is shorted to the emitter, so it is 0 volts. But at open position, since no current flows and hence no voltage drop across the collector resistor, therefore the whole supplied voltage appears between collector and emitter. If the supplied voltage is 9 volts, then at open position, 9 volt will appear between collector and emitter. But note that when a load is connected between collector and emitter, voltage will be lower. We can neglect this if the load is of very high resistance. Now that we have learned how a transistor functions as a switch, let's jump to the bistable multivibrator circuit. The circuit consists of two NPN transistors with collector resistors. Base of the first transistor is connected to the collector of the second transistor in series with a resistor. Similarly, the fourth resistor is connected. Finally, connect a push button between base and emitter of each transistor. Now, power it up using a DC voltage source such as a 9V battery. The output can be taken from any one of the transistors or from both the transistors. Let's build the circuit on a breadboard. I have connected LEDs between collector and emitter of each transistor. Then I have connected the battery. As you can see, initially the red LED lights up. But I can change this by pressing the respective push button. As you can see, now the blue LED lights up. So this way you can change between the two stable states. 
But how does circuit works? Let's first name each and every component. Initially, when the voltage source VCC is connected, both transistors Q1 and Q2 are off. Current flows to the base of Q1 in this part has shown and current flows to the base of Q2 in this part. So both transistors will try to activate. But no two transistors are exactly same. One transistor will always activate faster than the other one. Let's assume Q1 gets activated first. Now look, voltage between collector and emitter becomes zero volts as it is on. And this voltage appears between base and emitter of Q2. So Q2 remains off because it requires 0 0.7 volts between base and emitter of a transistor to be on. And since Q2 is off, current easily flows through the base of Q1 in this part, making it on indefinitely. The circuit is now in a stable state. Q1 is on and Q2 is off. It stores this information indefinitely. Now how do we change this stable state? For that, we need to externally give inputs to the circuit, which is called triggering. We have two push buttons for this purpose. But really, it can be anything. One can be connected to sensors, or both can be connected to somewhere else for triggering the circuit. But to make it simple, let's stick with the push buttons for now. The current stable state is that Q1 is on and Q2 is off. To trigger it to the second stable state, Q1 must be off and Q2 must be on. To do that, we can forcefully turn Q1 off by pressing the first push button. This will short the base and emitter terminals and turn off the transistor Q1. Now that Q1 is off, current easily flows through this part. And hence, Q2 turns on. Because Q2 is on, zero volt is applied between the base and emitter of Q1. So even if the button is released, Q1 remains off. So this is the second stable state. Q1 is off and Q2 is on. Similarly, you can trigger the circuit to the first stable state by pressing the second button. This will turn Q2 off and turn Q1 on. So that's how a bistable multivibrator circuit works. If the power source is disconnected and then connected again, there is no guarantee which transistor turns on first. Even if there is a higher probability that one transistor turns on faster than the other one, Replacing the transistor will make it impossible to know whether Q1 or Q2 will be on initially. To avoid this confusion, initial triggering can be used to activate one transistor faster than the other one at the time of powering up the circuit. What we need to do is that, connect a small capacitor such as 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor across base and emitter of the transistor which we wish to be off during power up. In my case, I want Q2 to be off initially. What happens is that, as the source is connected, an RC circuit will form. We know that in an RC circuit, voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantly. Initially, voltage across it is 0 volts, and after some time, it reaches the supplied voltage. So, in the bistable multivibrator circuit, as the capacitor charges, voltage across the capacitor will be 0 volts initially, which means that Q2 will be off initially. Because Q2 is off, Q1 will be on. So, when powering up the circuit, it is guaranteed that Q1 will be on and Q2 will be off. After the capacitor is connected in the circuit, the blue LED glows initially every time I power up the circuit. In the multivibrator circuit, it requires two separate triggering inputs to change between two stable states. By connecting additional components like this, a single triggering input can change between two stable states. 
I have built the same circuit on a breadboard and as you can see a single press on the push button changes the state of the multi vibrator. How the circuit works is that the diode adjacent to the on transistor gets forward biased and the other diode adjacent to the off transistor gets reverse biased. When the button is pressed, the forward biased diode pulls voltage down at the base and turns off the transistor. This way the state is changed. This time the second diode gets forward biased and the first one gets reverse biased. Now if the button is pressed again, Q2 turns off and Q1 will be on. So this way it changes state again. The values of resistors to be set depends on the loads connected to the circuit, such as LEDs. LEDs take around 20 milliamps of current at 3 volts. According to that, the collector resistor RC should be equal to the supplied voltage VCC minus load voltage VL whole divided by the load current IL. The supplied voltage is 9 volts, the load voltage is 3 volts and the load current is 20 milliamps. By solving this, we get a resistance of 300 ohms. The closest resistance value I got is 330 ohms, so I have used it for both RC1 and RC2. The values of R1 and R2 should be so chosen that it can strongly turn its transistors on. So to find the value of the resistors, follow these steps. First, find the collector current when the transistor is at on position. IC is equal to VCC divided by RC. Put the values of VCC and RC. So we get a collector current of 0.0272 amperes or 27.2 milliamperes. The second step is to find base current. Base current IB is equal to the collector current IC divided by the current gain beta of the transistor. The collector current we found in the first step is 27.2 milliampere. So we put that here. The current gain of a transistor can be assumed to be 10. This is because we want excess base current to strongly turn the transistor on. So base current is equal to 0.00272 amperes or 2.72 milliamperes. Now the third and the last step, find base resistor's resistance. Base resistance RB is equal to VCC minus 0.7 whole divided by IB. Put the values of VCC and IB. So we get a base resistance of 3051 ohms. From observation in the circuit, it is seen that both collector resistor and the adjacent resistor take part in supplying base current. So base resistance should be the sum of these two values because they are in series. Particularly for Q1, the base resistor RB is RC2 plus R1. So R1 is equal to RB minus RC2. Put the values of RB and RC2 in the equation. So we get R1 is equal to 2721 ohms. The closest resistor I have got is 3.3 kilo ohms. So I have used it for both R1 and R2. So that's how you can calculate the resistor values. Sometimes there may not be any load connected to one side or both sides. Then you have to assume RC to be around 5 to 10 kilo ohms and then solve for R1 and R2. Please support my channel by sharing this video. Also don't forget to comment down below for any doubts or any other questions. Thank you so much for watching this video.